Simon Sinek, a very popular book author and motivational speaker, shared an interesting experience. He and his friend joined a five-mile marathon in New York. And at the end of the marathon, at the finishing line, the organizers put up stands or tables wherein they set bagels, donuts, coffee, and soft drinks for free. And so Simon Sinek told his friend, let us go and grab some donuts and bagels and a cup of coffee. But his friend, looking at the long line, said, No, the line is too long. I'll better go home. The line is too long. I prefer to go home. Simon Sinek drew a very insightful reflection in that simple experience when he said, some know what they want and are willing to sacrifice to get them. But others know what they want, but they focus on what prevents them from getting what they want. My dear seminarians, as you have heard in the gospel today, a young man approached Jesus and he wanted to be perfect, to gain eternal life. And so Jesus outlined the requirements of how to be perfect. And much more, Jesus said, if you want to be perfect, sell your possessions and come follow me. The gospel today tells us that the young man went away sad because he did not want to part with his many possessions. Here is a classic example of someone who knew what he wanted and yet was not willing to pay the price to make his dream come true. My dear students, seminarians, you are no different from the young man in the gospel today. Jesus is inviting you. You are in the right direction. Jesus is asking you, are you willing to pay the price? Secondly, if you want to succeed, if you want to achieve what you have set for yourselves, becoming a priest, or at least contemplating on becoming a priest. You need to have constancy and regularity. The toes of the town right now is Heidelin Diaz because she garnered the gold in weightlifting in her division. But the dream of Heidelin Diaz started 16 years ago. Regularly, constantly, every day, she went to the gym to practice. Every day, she maintained her regimen to the gym, go home, rest, the following morning, she would go again to the gym. She was clearly focused on what she wanted. So she maintained a regular, constant schedule. You know, a single day in the gym, isolated from the other days, would be insignificant. It meant nothing. 
it is in you cause. But if you put them together, the accumulated days, years of going to the gym regularly and constantly, then that's the totality of that made it possible for Heidi Lin to garner, capture the gold medal in the Olympics. In the same way, in the same manner, if you want to achieve something, be it priesthood, be it a degree in philosophy, you need to maintain a regular, constant regimen, a good habit, maybe in your studies. It is long and arduous. Sometimes you will be discouraged, but then you should not lose your sight of your vision or your goal like Heidi Lin. It was very clear in her mind that she wanted a gold medal and so she was ready and willing to put in the necessary work. As they say, a peso a day will build a house someday. And Jesus was even more empathic when he said, anyone who wants to follow me, anyone who starts plowing and keeps looking back is not worthy of me. In other words, just like the young man in the gospel today, Jesus would have wanted him to focus on Jesus, not on the obstacles, not on those that would prevent him in realizing his dream. For sure, as you continue your studies here in the seminary, there will be discouragements. You will have sometimes low grades, difficult professors or teachers, difficulties with your community members, fellow classmates, financial difficulties, emotional problems, and so on. But do not focus on these. Do not encourage your fears and your doubts. Because if God, Jesus, called you, you are now here, I'm sure He will also give you the corresponding grace to surmount all difficulties. I always like that episode in the Old Testament. As you have heard in the first reading today, God was always taking care of the Israelites as they were traveling from Egypt to the Promised Land. You know, when the Israelites were not so far from the Promised Land, Moses organized a reconnaissance team of 12 members coming from the 12 tribes of Israel. They were given the task to go and spy, do some reconnaissance activities in the Promised Land. And so, these 12 men went secret secretly as spies into the Promised Land. It was true, the Promised Land was flowing with milk and honey. It was like paradise, fertile land. And yet, when they came back, they reported to the Israelites, we would be no match to the people of the Promised Land, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, and the Amalekites. They are hardened warlords trained in the art of war. It would be no match for them. And they are giants. We are like grasshoppers. By the flick of their fingers, they would dismiss us. And so there was fear and discouragement 
among the Israelites and they even blamed Moses, why did you bring us to this howling desert? It would have been better for us to be in Egypt. And yet, two of the men who belong to this recognizance team, Joshua and Caleb said, No, we shall move forward. We shall conquer and we shall occupy the promised land because the Lord is on our side. The Lord is on our side. Don't encourage your fears, your doubts, but always remember that if God called you, He will give you the corresponding strength and grace and the guidance of the Holy Spirit to fulfill this noble task, this noble dream that you have started. Lastly, in order to survive seminary life, you need to have great patience. Tune down your idealism. People in the seminary are not saints, not even angels. They are fellow human beings with all their faults, weaknesses, warts, and all. You have to learn to live with people who are imperfect. Sometimes, they rub you the wrong way. Even Jesus had to put up with his apostles who obviously had rough edges when they joined him. They had their own shortcomings, even Peter, many times over. But Jesus always gave him a second chance. In fact, Jesus was accused of being a drunkard or a glothon because he dined with tax collectors and sinners who, from the point of view of the scribes and the Pharisees, do not deserve God's love. In fact, fraternizing with them would render them unclean and unworthy to offer sacrifices and prayers in the synagogues or much more in the temple. But you know what Jesus said? People who are well do not need a doctor, but sick people do. I have come not to call the self-righteous, but sinners. What is the point of Jesus? That all of us are imperfect, and so, first and foremost, we should be patient with ourselves. Sometimes, seemingly, we are not making progress. Rome was not built in a day, in a single day. You have to do it continuously, regularly, with patience. Until all your efforts, your sacrifices, will finally bear fruits. And so, as we continue with this Holy Mass, let us pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit tells us and leads us where we ought to be. We are no different from the young man in the Gospel. Jesus asks you today, are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to pay the price to make your dream comes through.